So you're walking up and down your room, smoking countless cigarettes and drinking copious amounts of coffee, hoping for the goddesses that reside within the pen and inspire artists to create to pay you a visit before you kill yourself with lung cancer. And before you know it, you have covered more distance than a streetcar and got a run in your stockings and have burnt a hole in your favorite pair of pumps. Ignore that. Well, turns out those pesky muses were not goddesses, but harlots, Jezebels, harpies, wanton benches and wayward women of the street. That is what we, men, call women who lay with anyone except us. And those elusive broads have bedded Shakespeare, flirted with Eliot, sang songs to Wordsworth, and wooed Wilde, even though they knew he was gay, but won't even pay you a platonic visit. Curses! So what do you do now? Do you pull out what's left of your hair and has cursed your fortune in Finastri to keep? Or do you kneel before the Lord's altar, praying for some pagan deities to come to you? Well, wonder no more, because I have plotted a roadmap for you that helps you navigate the troubled waters of writer's block. Number one, read. That is right, read. Read a book, read a magazine, Read a play, read a Wikipedia article, read a phone book. After all, how can you plagiarize if you have no source material to steal from? You can steal a word from Bard's mouth, pinch a witticism from Wilde, nick a verse from Poe, or break into Gibran's metaphorical house. But first, you have to read their works to be able to do that. Number 2 Take the Steve Y road to inspiration. That's right, pull a Steve Y. Go on a fast. Fast all day. Fast for nine days straight. Do not permit yourself anything except coffee and cigarettes. Get on your knees. Get on your knees and pray to God or whatever to forgive your sins or grant you more sins if you're a Satanist. Pray for inspiration. Pray for that elusive spark that gets a fire going. Pray for all the pain to end. Pray for it all to end. Lock yourself up in a closet. You are already in the closet, so you might as well not permit yourself out of it. Stay in there until your pen starts rolling. Go on a diet of two almonds and a thimble of water. Go out in the nature and commune with the fourth dimension tantric forces. Repeat until you are either motivated to write or achieve enlightenment. Number 3. Chemically enhance yourself. I'm not saying do it, this is YouTube after all, but yeah, totally do it. Pump yourself so full of coffee until you start shaking like a wet dog. Seek refuge in cigarettes and alcohol. Nothing gets the creative juices flowing like chemical enhancement. Now I'm not saying you should do it, this is YouTube, but if you absolutely have to, there are a number of chemicals you can pump into your blood that pass the blood-brain barrier. There's a certain herb with myriad medicinal properties. There is the extract of a certain poppy that is also good for pain alleviation. There's a certain powdery leaf whose juices you drink in your cola anyway. If your sibling has ADHD, you can take some of his medication. How else do you think beat poets and gonzo journalists write all that? Again, I'm not saying do it, but yeah, totally do it. Number 4. Pay a ghostwriter. How do you think those ghastly celebrities write their books? Do you think James R. Famous Name has time to park his backside on a bench all day, smoke cigarette after cigarette, drink interminable cups of coffee, and write the masterpiece of fecal matter arrangement that is his book? No, he's far too busy abusing narcotics and diddling kids to give a bloody rat's ass about anything. He hires someone else to do it. Do you think Obama penned that door stopper himself while he was busy playing the race car to get elected? Do you think Madonna's brain could let go of sex for long enough to write a biography? Even Alexandre Dumas had a ghostwriter who wrote half his stuff. If you can afford it, have someone else write those dregs of literary wine that are doomed to the dung pile of oblivion anyway. 
Nobody cares, and you help a half-talented hack pay his bills too. But of course, you are an up-and-coming writer who can't afford a decent meal, let alone ghostwriting. So you are on your own. Number 5. Bash your head repeatedly against the wall. That's right. If you are thinking of becoming a writer, odds are you live with your mom. Or under the grace of a sympathetic member of opposite sex, you are too lazy, too unexperienced, or too high-minded to have a steady source of income. So you cannot afford ghostwriting, C.4, nor you can afford drugs to get the creative juices flowing, C.3. You cannot afford to pay your own bills for Christ's sake. So there is only one recourse left open to you. Bash your head repeatedly against the wall until all your problems are lost in bright, scorching, searing white pain. You will probably get high before either the writer's block goes away or the brain damage erases all traces of writing ability, responsibility or caring you might have had in that worthless, empty vessel you call a brain. Again, this is YouTube, so I'm not really suggesting you should do it. You have a brain of your own, and I'm not your father or legal guardian. Number 6. Watch anime. Writing is hard, and inspired writing is even harder, so you might as well give up now and watch anime. I suggest you should watch something easygoing with plenty of cute girls in it, something a slice of life with either a Christmas or a beach episode that would either heal your heart or your most precious member. It is not like your writing career is going anywhere, so you might as well take life easy. Plus, you might as well rip up Lucky Star if you are going to plagiarize. Number 7. Just write. Do you suppose professional writers who get paid $4.99 an hour sit on their asses and do nothing all day when the spark of imagination does not ignite? No, they don't get paid to suck their thumbs, they get paid to write, so they write. Write whatever comes to mind, write unrelated sentences and garbled phrases, write in a so-called stream of consciousness fashion. It doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. Write about your pain, your suffering, your anguish, your hatred. Write about how symphonic the screams of your enemies are as the hour of jackboot-clad payback approaches. <clears throat> anyway, those were my tips on how to deal with writer's book. If you found them useful, go out and write. And do not forget to thank me when you hit it big. Also, you can repay the favor by subscribing to my channel and liking and sharing this video. Until next time.